Hey guys, Wade here again. It's been a long time in the making, but I finally got the nose hatch installed as far as the door. I'll show you the components. It's a tall sucker once it's opened up. Here's the inside. You can see I've pretty much got everything installed. There will be a pitot tube that goes in there and then down in here. There's an integrated backup battery system. So I've got the toolbox in here. Most of the electrical components that are going to be on this side are in here except for the cabling. And then here are the hinges. I've had a little bit of an issue earlier um, welding. Today has been a very crappy welding day and it all centers around the same 6061 aluminum that the instrument panel was cut from and then also these hinges, this 90 thousandths. I just have not had any luck welding on it really tonight. I welded up some holes in the instrument panel and uh, I got it done but man was it ugly. So I'm doing a lot of grinding and cleaning up on that. I'll post that to the blog when I'm done. But here is my hinge setup. Now what I had, let me scoot this over just a hair so you can get these little guys in the shot. So what I had was this little nub right here. I had two of them. They both looked really nice, just like this. What they did is they're basically a spacer to see how this is canted up just a hair. Well, this was to go on here and lock that in. This is 6061 aluminum, as is this. So I was going to tack weld these on three sides to this edge here on the outboard side on each hinge. And again, it was just disastrous. This, it was like welding two different metals. This hinge just did not want to take the heat. And they're both about, I mean, this is 100 thousandths approximately. This is 90 thousandths. They're very close. Well, they were. This one just got destroyed. The amount of heat that I had to put in the base here to get, you know, to flow both of these metals together, it just melted this. So I don't know what's going on, if it's not really 6061 or what. But uh, I'm going to have to rethink how I'm going to put these on. Of course, this is kind of jacked up here. And it kind of tweaked as far as heat. Kind of tweaked this hinge a little bit, but it's fine. Uh, I just had to straighten it out a little bit because it took so much to get that thing off. But so this is the nose hatch with the hinge assembly. I did offset these. Here, you can see how they kind of wiggle. And, and the problem was, is when you're dialing this in, let me back up to show you what I'm talking about. When you're dialing in the nose hatch door and you're putting it on, as, as well as I was doing it, as I come down, I have a center line mark right here. And I'm trying to make sure that this is good to go left to right. There's some wiggle room, and of course, you can kind of cheat once you put in this guy. It's been kind of through some weather, as you can see, as all my stuff has. A couple of hurricanes, but uh, once this latch is in place, then wherever this is, and then your, your connecting piece that goes into the latch... That will drive this center point, which so you can kind of cheat a little bit. However, what I wasn't accounting for, because as I'm lining that up and, and dialing everything in, as a point of note, I set the cover for this area right here, the aft nose and the avionics cover, which is also goes underneath here and is the glare shield. I uh, got in there and dug all that out and cleaned it up. I'm going to mount the canard, which is right over there. 
I'm going to mount that soon and then dial this guy in and, and uh, have it so that the canard is finally in with the nose finished or somewhat finished for the most part. But uh, I digress back to here. Now, as you're dialing this in, now this is kind of a little bit just a hair raised here because I'm using these clamps on here like that of course nothing is in there as far as the battery or the toolbox when I'm doing this and I'm slowly putting it down back and forth back and forth back and forth well these clamps when this settles down it has just enough give with those clamps that you don't notice that when you do the final when you do a hard mount with something like this and then you close it this up here is just a tad raised and that's what I was trying to also fix with these little guys so I kind of made the hole a little bit oval in the hinge and then I was going to set the hard circle point with this and again I'm going to have to rethink that but overall I'm happy with it still some minor dialing in but I mean vast improvement obviously over what it was I've had this thing slide off the tape a couple times and get a little a couple dings in it for the most part uh, easily dialed in and uh, there's I'll show you here if I can I can get down on it you can see there's just a little bit of a lip there which isn't there so I'd like to scoot this up and up uh, I mean we're talking 30 to 50 thousand so I'm, I'm being a little bit anal here and then it's also just a hair proud and then this gap is because that gap down there now this was perfect before the great welding debacle that just happened within the last half hour 45 minutes so I've got one more thing to show you on this and it's in response to some advice that that Marco gave me we were working on his plane uh, his flying airplane JT in his hangar one day and he showed me that when the aircraft is in the grazing position and you'd like to get down here and look up and see something in there or you're just trying to work it really is a lot easier if you can remove this nose cover or this nose hatch door and his he didn't build the aircraft terry lamp did but his it has four like zeus fasteners that hold this on so i definitely wanted a hinge door just to get in there and have quick access to do whatever i needed to do but i also wanted to make it removable so i kind of came up with this scheme and so I'll show you how it works right now. Again, I offset these when I tested them out. They were kind of getting in the way, so I offset them about 200 thousandths, one up uh, higher than the other, just so that I can get a little bit more clearance. I don't know if I needed to do that, but the holes are drilled now. So these come out. Again, these are a little bit tighter than they were before. I think, you know, I'm just things are settling in and all that and. So I pull those, and then this is a clip, and there's a bar, if you can see that bar right there. And so I can just take this and just pull that off. Now, you have total access to get in there and do whatever you need to do. And with that, put this down here. This still has plenty, just enough clearance. I shouldn't say plenty, but just enough clearance. It just barely kisses the front latch of the nose uh, toolbox. So then when I want to put this thing back on, I can only show it to you without, uh, maybe like this, here we go. So this is basically a hook, a clip, 
I'm going to trim these as far as round these. I'll give them a nice radius. So everything is pretty much done on these except for, for just the radius on there. But I wanted to get this video done tonight. So let me see if I can do this and have you see what I'm doing. Sorry, let me adjust that. All right, so this goes in here. And then I just take my thumb and I push forward and I pop that into place. And then kind of have to wiggle it a little bit. And then these guys right here. And then there you go. That's it. Lines up. Again, I have to do some very minor tweaking, but let me get back here. And it lines up pretty well with the, the center line mark. So that's it. The next thing I'm going to do on this is, again, take this latch right here. I'll put this mounted up underneath here. And then I've got an indentation right here already. Already waiting for a little hook to mate up to this latch. And this will have a cable that goes up. And on this is this right here is for my uh, fuel vapor sniffer that i'm going to use at least starting out just to make sure that i don't have any fuel vapors in the aircraft when i start test flying it i'll probably swap it out later on for something else that's just an aside but that little hole right there is the cable mount for the pole that will go over here and then pull this latch and this, once this is pulled, the nice thing about that type of latch, it's an Eberhardt, it, it actually pops this up a little bit like that so that you can grab a hold of it and open it up. So even without these things being in there, like, uh, you know, really tight, they're still, even though that's quote unquote loosey goosey, yeah, it's working fine. Again, just some minor tweaks. But that's it. Hey, uh, I'll do a few more videos over the next week or so. I'll do one on the instrument panel. I'll do one on the canopy. I just took the frame off of the canopy. I've also painted the canopy, but I'm not going to, on the inside, I'm not going to show you that right now. Again, I'll save that for another video. I'll probably combine it, maybe with the video that shows the canard installed and then this cover. And then this cover will be hinged as well. And so I'll be working on the hinges, the big, much bigger hinges for that cover. And so it'll be like an MG hood that pops open. But again, separate video. I was almost remiss in not giving a huge shout out to Mike Toomey. I had a chat with him. Uh, probably about a week ago and he really helped me out it, it seems kind of simple now but I was having a huge issue almost rethinking this whole hinge setup these are kind of hard to dial in if you're not used to or accustomed to these types of hinges and the trick is as he told me the pivot point right here and this is just one of probably a dozen 3D printed and plasma cut hinges that I tried out, different configurations, different angles on this arm, different ways, uh, and none of them seem to be working. But the trick is you got to drive the pivot point as far forward and as far up as you possibly can, and that did the trick. And what it does is it keeps this edge right here from banging into the the top of the nose and that's the problem I was having every configuration I had 
when I raised it up, it seemed like it was going to work fine. But when I raised it up, this front lip right here would smack the nose. So that's, uh, that, I mean, that was a game changer right there. Hey, thanks, Mike, for your words of wisdom. Again, you always seem to uh, have a, a, a lot of good tricks up your sleeve. I also want to point out, this right here, although you can't really see it, the sides that these pivot points are attached to, this whole assembly right here was welded uh, 1 8 inch 6061 aluminum, and it, it just welded beautifully. I mean, it was so nice. I used my uh, Prime Weld TIG 225, and it's got AC. And I, I, you know, I was just, it was so fun to weld that thing up. Now that was a second try because I, I actually tried to weld smaller walls the first time around and I didn't have quite the luck. Uh, and, uh, you know, I haven't been welding for a while. I haven't AC TIG welded in probably seven, eight years. So, you know, I'm kind of rusty on that. But this thing welded up beautifully. And so I don't know what it is with this uh, 6061 90 thousandths that came from the same stock as the instrument panel but causing issues uh, at least as I was having tonight but that's it and uh, I will say adieu thanks for watching cheers